Hi, my name is Dan Corbett, and I'm the managing partner of Black Iron Group. Black Iron is a certified Salesforce and CarMac integration partner. And today I'd like to talk to you about integrating those two tools together. And then I'd like to demonstrate a version of that to you. But first, a shameless plug. We were proud to take our 1800th Salesforce customer live this year. And we joined the CarMac partnership roles. To date, we've helped six dealerships discover the advantages of a CarMac Salesforce integration. There are 19 of us. We're headquartered in Norwalk, Connecticut, which is roughly an hour outside of New York. We're up and down the East Coast from Maine to Pennsylvania. And we are dedicated and focused to customer success. We have a dedicated resource on staff to help follow up with clients post-implementation, and she also sends newsletters and blog posts with informative information about both CarMac and Salesforce on a regular basis. Data can help dealerships find, win, and keep customers. And CarMac, in particular, can help dealerships drive with this data. CarMac is doing a lot of people in your organization a lot of good. Your allocation team uses it to decide what vehicles to take into inventory and when. Service uses it to manage and order parts inventory and then bill customers. And finance, of course, uses it to manage forecasting and manage cash. All of that happens inside of CarMac on a day-to-day -day basis for you. But connecting that information to Salesforce can take you to a whole new level. Integrating that data with CRM data lets us use the sales data at the customer level and start to gain insights on what our customers are doing and what we can do to help. CarMax Unity API gives us access to all kinds of different CarMax data, inventory information, sales and service orders, even invoice information. And we can use a tool in Salesforce called Process Builder, which is a workflow engine that can help us to alert customers to new vehicles using a database of their preferences to drive kind of those targeted messages. We can alert customers to pending service needs based on estimated mileage. We can even, based on estimated fleet age, take information to talk to different customers about maybe trading in and upgrading to new vehicles. Today, I'd like to walk you through a scenario inside of the Salesforce tool. And in my version of this, a sales rep is gonna be alerted to a new vehicle using Process Builder that a customer of theirs shares uh, product preferences uh, with the vehicle that's just come in. We're then gonna analyze historical sales that came out of CarMax to see what else we can do to help that customer. We're then gonna go on site, help the customer understand some of that, and record our activity with the customer all from our mobile device, and finally, we're gonna come back to the office and we're gonna record the, the uh, information in the system, gather that, analyze it, and look at it in dashboards. So let's get started. So here's Salesforce. Uh, I want to not caution, but sort of remind everybody that this is an example version of Salesforce. Salesforce is eminently configurable. So this homepage in Salesforce isn't necessarily what your homepage would look like. We have control over all of the components on this page. So if you don't wanna see products by this year, last year, we can take it off. If you don't do Outlook integration or Gmail integration, we can take these off. Really anything on the page can be different and it doesn't have to be the same for every user in your organization. If we wanna take this information and make it different for the different groups, that's possible as well. Now I mentioned Process Builder kind of at the beginning of the conversation. And it's a workflow engine that allows me to take data events in Salesforce and use information on that to alert people in the organization, to update records, or even to add records. And with the wealth of information we can get from CarMac, we can then take CarMac information and use that workflow engine as well. So in this example, we got a new vehicle in, and that vehicle came into a, a, an asset uh, object that we have in Salesforce, and it was matched against a customer preference field that we added, a custom field, and an alert was sent to any sales rep who had customers who would express the preference for that kind of vehicle. So you'll see over here in my chatter post that this automatically got created a few hours ago, sending me a note that says a new vehicle matching a client preference has been received into inventory. And if I click into this view, Salesforce then takes me right to that view. Again, this is completely customizable. And regular users can build these views and build as many as they want. Essentially what the system did was say, there's a truck out there that's a W900 
match it against the truck model preferences and show me anybody who's got W900 in their, in their preferences. And so one of the clients here in Connecticut, Steve Hiker Trucking, is listed there. This draws up the account page for us. And again, this is a sample. We can make this look like anything you want it to look like. But in my example, I wanted to see the people I work with at Steve Hiker. I wanted to see the assets they owned. I wanted to see the sales orders or the sales that they've done with me recently. I wanted to see account information. I wanted to know where they were, what their phone number was. Uh, here's that truck model preferences, the thing that drove this in the first place. And then I added two report snapshots over here on the side to give me that CarMac, that rich CarMac data in a graphical kind of easy to understand format. So I've got sales by month, uh, this year, last year, listed out over here, and I've got sales by product category. We'll come back to this in just a second. Now, this started by receiving a vehicle in inventory that matched the preference. So I think the first thing I wanna do is write an email to the guy who's in charge of allocation over at Steve Hiker, Jack Clark, and I wanna tell him about uh, the new trucks that we received. So if I, oops, well, get in the right field. If I type Jack in here, it's gonna find all the records out there. I know it's Jack Clark. And then, you know, I can type an email if that's what I wanna do. But there's a better way to do this. If I use this template function, I can use a template pre-written by my marketing department that fills in all that information for me. So it'll merge Jack's name, it'll merge Bridgeport because we know where they are and it knows that they're in Connecticut. And very quickly, I've got an email that's grammatically correct, that's spelled right, that I can send out to the customer at the click of a button. Now at this point, that has been sent off to Jack and he's gonna reply to me and tell me that he is interested in having us come and meet with him. But I don't think at this point that I just want to go there and talk to him about W900. So if I'm going to go to Bridgeport and see Jack, I want to have more information on that. And that's where this great CarMac information comes in. I've got all my sales information from CarMac, and I've built out these report charts on the account record. So I can very quickly see at the product family, for example, that we're doing pretty well in used semis and new semis and even trailers. But we've got this weird little piece of pie here for used refrigeration trucks. It tells me two things. It tells me Steve uh, has a refrigeration or Steve Hiker Trucking dealership, not a guy, has um, uh, uh, refrigeration trucks in his fleet and that we haven't done much business with him on those refrigeration trucks. This is something that we can help with. And my account plan when I get there is to talk to him not only about the W900, but talk to him about the refrigeration trucks as well. So we're going to go to Bridgeport and talk to Jack, and I'm going to show you what this looks like and feels like as we update these records and access these records on our phone. Hey, so we're visiting with Jack at Steve Hiker, and we start to talk to him about various things. I think the first thing that I want to talk to Jack about after the W900 is our refrigeration trucks. And so right from my phone, I can access all of that great CarMac data that I have out in the system remotely. I know that the Isuzu NRR is my refrigeration truck, and so I've got that information on my phone. I can show him the various models that I have. If I had uh, graphics in the system, which I don't have in the sample database, that would show up here as well. And I could have Jack look through our used refrigeration truck inventory right here online with me. Once we're kind of done with the meeting and Jack has expressed an interest and I have some follow-up, I want to record that information in the system. So I'm going to search for Jack's record, and I'm gonna choose him. Now there's four or five buttons down here at the bottom. The first thing I wanna do is log that meeting in the system so that I've got that captured. But I don't necessarily wanna type because I'm not great at it, so I wanna do this and say, on-site meeting. And then I'm gonna capture what I did there. Had a great meeting with Jack, period. Need to get Dawn caught up on the refrigeration needs at Steve Hiker, period. We'll do this back in the office, period. Schedule a new meeting for three weeks. Right, and so that information is now stored in Salesforce on Jack's record and on Steve Hiker Trucking's record, so I've got that information. But I can also uh, do some more things while I'm out in the field. For example, maybe I wanna take pictures of some uh, trucks that, uh, that, that they've got on their lot that need some help. Maybe we can help in our service department. Maybe there's a trailer there that we can replace for them. Or maybe we wanna look at this aging re uh, refrigeration trucks to see if there's anything we can do. So I'm gonna hit file 
and I'm going to take a photo. Um, get that turned around. And we'll take a picture of my computer. There we go. So I've got this, and I can post this to the system, but I want to get a little more clever than that. I want to alert Don. Remember, Don was the guy who's going to help me with this. So I'm going to use the chatter function in Salesforce to collaborate with Don. So I at mention, that's what it's called, Don Merwin. And then maybe I say, great meeting today at Steve Hiker, period. I need to get you caught up on refrigeration needs there, period. I'll introduce you to Jack tomorrow. And now when I post that, that information also finds its way back to Salesforce, and it's stored on that Jack record. And I'm going to show you that it also alerted Don an email if we wanted to, so that he's prepared to kind of help me put this together. I've collaborated in the field using my phone with both the Carmack data and with my fellow uh, employees or team members back in the office. So let's go take a look at the Salesforce team. All right, so right back in the Salesforce record, we're looking at the Steve Hiker trucking account that we all know and love. I'm gonna go to Jack's record and show you what we did out in the field and show you how that information eventually found its way here. So under the activity, I've got information about the emails that I've sent. I've also got uh, an on-site meeting that I scheduled with him, right? And so if I open this up, you can see the information, right? I scheduled a new meeting for three weeks from now and there's Steve's information. And then on Chatter, you can also see the picture. You can see that I at mentioned Dawn. So all of this information finds its way back into Salesforce for us so we can use it to talk to these guys. The last thing I'm gonna show you is our dashboard function. So every piece of data, whether it came from Salesforce or came from Carmack, is now reportable in the Salesforce system. And any report in Salesforce is dashboardable, if that can be a verb. And so I can take all kinds of great uh, analytical views of that data. For example, I can look at sales by product this year, last year. And I've got that information at the model level. Or I can see my sales rep by month information. So as I walk down here, I can hover over anybody's numbers and see them kind of in detail. I've got sales by product family this year, last year, and have that information listed out for me in a table. Sales by account by month tells me the big accounts, kind of down to the small accounts, although in the sample database, I don't have any small accounts. Um, I can get a picture of my total sales by product, and this can start to tell me if I've got one gigantic piece of this pie for one particular model, that maybe I need to figure something out and start to move and, and try, to, try to expand our base. And then finally, an oldie but a goodie, what are my sales orders by rep by product? As you can see, Dan Corbett is killing it uh, and probably deserves a raise. So what's next? Well, we'd love to hear from you. You can reach out to us via email at info at blackirongroup.com or by calling me, Dan Corbett, at 203-604-6765. You can reach out to your Carmack or your Salesforce rep directly. We appreciate your time. Thanks for listening.